Termites, episode 141. Fire. So much fire this week. Lots of fire. Fourth of July, pyro, pyro. <laughs> Did you see my video on Instagram? This is so gross. Well, the Let's Go Brandon firework was, <laughs> was right next to the alien disco, and I don't have the guts to light off something that large, but had I had the guts, I'd have gone for the <laughs> alien disco. Um, yeah, oh, baby cat. Baby cat, would you like to make an appearance? Meow, meow, meow. So needy. Today. Very talkative, very needy today. You haven't been home a lot. Well, I have not been home a lot. I've been in the Ozarks <laughs> every waking moment, dealing with the 87 <laughs> and their situations, shall we call it? Their situations. Um, and the Borgata was super duper fun, sold out. I love that place. I know. I just love everything about it. And then I like to go down to the Atlantic City Boardwalk and take a giant walk and see what's going on. I like to pick around down there and see all the changes because there's always something different. And I still can't find most of my cats. There used to be hundreds under the boardwalk. Did they move them? Well, they said they moved them. The funniest sign I ever saw was there were like a thousand cats under there. A lot of them were black and white. And then there was a poster uh, tacked up to it, like a phone pole that said, um, uh, missing cat goes by Timothy. Lady, <laughs> it's black and white. There's five million Timothys down here, and none of them, are, no cat really, well, maybe in your house they answer, but hey, Timothy, there's... <laughs> anyway. Um, it's like uh, White House Sub, too. Yeah, the White House Sub. If you ever go to Atlantic City, you gotta go to the White House Sub and do it early, because the line is crazy, and it, it can get Philly bossy around there like people j but i like it because the workers are like you're fin you're in the wrong line fuck off they just won't feed you they don't care like it if you didn't call yeah it's a thing um and shout out to andy pitts who if you've never seen very funny guy uh who opened this show he's a lot of fun too um and i didn't really win any money i found my machine but i have an area there at the borgata where i always win I don't know. The vibe was weird. Really? Maybe because it's summer. I don't know. Yeah, I feel cozier in the winter. Summer. Yeah, I don't know. I don't feel as, I don't know. I felt like I should have been outside, but where am I going to go except the boardwalk? Right. You can't go walking around there. Not at night. A little danger yeah. if you'll, you will. Yeah. You'll get <laughs> so there you have it, termites. Um, I hope everybody's fourth was fun and safe. I saw your boat um, too. Boat, the boat rides. Oh, in Atlantic City, that was great. Yeah, with Captain Alex. He's just a friend. We'd just call him that, though, and Dory. Um, it was, yeah, I've n only once in my life cause it was with them yeah. that I've been in a boat in the Atlantic, a regular boat like you could have on a regular lake. That's why I was like, where are we actually going in this boat? <laughs> like, I, I don't understand the ocean. Uh -huh. So I'm picturing the perfect storm, and this boat wasn't as big as George Clooney's boat. And I'm like, whoa, uh, I had no idea there's like coves where it's glassy water, uh -huh. but then there's been so many sharks. Like, well, I mean, there see were, any? no, God, no, I didn't see any, <laughs> but Long Island over the fourth, I mean, wow. crawling with them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know Atlantic city's not right there, but close enough for a shark to get there in an hour. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Termites. What are we drinking? How was your fourth? The fourth was great. Yeah. Yeah. It was, um, um, Basically, I ma uh, there's a barbecue sauce in St. Louis called Malls. Uh -huh. I mauled some burgers with everybody and then shot off. I shoot off the fireworks that are meant for children. I know. Yeah. I'm not blowing my hand off. Yeah. I need both hands. I'm getting older. I need my <laughs> eyes. I'm not going to blow my face off. Um, and then, uh, you know, same old, same old. Cousins. But, yeah, all the people. Um uh, Canada Day, I posted the video of the moose that I saw in yeah. Banff. Well, outside of Banff. Um, awesome. Yeah. All if right. you haven't seen, I always put Tom Green on there because he's my friend. He now, he bought like a ranch in Canada. Yeah. And I mean, no offense, Tom, but I never thought of Tom as like strikingly handsome. I just thought he looked like, <laughs> I, well, I just thought he looked like a regular guy. He's cute. But he's got a cowboy hat on now and the out, like he's not trying to dress like that. He just dresses like he's got donkeys yeah. and he's on top of a horse. He, I mean, he looks like something out of a movie. I was like, oh, who knew you were hiding well, strikingly he handsome? Be Yellowstone. He should be in Yellowstone yeah. and he's earned it. Um, so go on his Instagram. But now there's a big fight. 
And I was watching the Today Show, uh, which I don't usually watch, by the way, but it was on. Um, am I going to join Threads? Why do you present me with two evil people and now I have to choose one? Right. If I stay on Twitter, I stay with evil Elon. If I go to threads, I'm with Fuckerberg. <laughs> no. And then I think I don't want to learn something new. No. I'm done now. No. But I did see Craig Melvin, who's super nice. He's the Today Show host guy. I've met him at a charity event. He was, his eyes are fascinating. They're like alien eyes. Um, by the way, speaking of aliens and people that aren't real... My friend Carrot Top was on the flight with that lady that was saying, the I'm, yes, the American flight. Aww. He started posting, and I'm like, what? He started posting way, 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 way before this hit the news uh, like the, and started going viral. <laughs> and I don't know. I, now, if you go on TikTok, there's so many conspiracy theories about was the guy not back there real? And then one guy across the aisle said, after it was over, he winked at me. But he didn't wink with his eyelid closing. His eye went closed from the sides. Stop. <laughs> How much square were they? It's pretty on? spooky. I think she, she, somebody said she'd been drinking tequila. If you go back and watch the video, the way she goes, if you guys want to stay on this plane and die, <laughs> I heard a little slurry drunky there. Right, yeah. I, it's what I heard, yeah. but that doesn't mean I'm right. Doesn't but that's what I heard. Right. But it was a five-hour or- ordeal. Carrot Top was so mad. They were leaving Dallas to go to Orlando. And I thought, well, she doesn't have any kids with her, so this isn't a Disney world. Well, adults go, I guess, by themselves. But why are you? But then I thought they were like passengers saw her drinking before she got on the plane. I'm like, well, anybody in the Delta Club's going to go, well, I saw Kathleen drinking. (laughs) I I mean, why else am I in the club? I'm not here for the soda. (laughs) No, I'm I'm here for a screwdriver. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I guess you could better think about what you do. But yeah, Carrot Top filmed. Uh, uh, but nobody stood up. I want to see the goody guy. Right. Nobody stood up. No. I'd be afraid to, too, though, the truth be told, because oh. people are crazy. People are crazy. You have to remember that. A lot of the American flight attendants are like, what's wrong? Well, I know. The American <laughs> airline. The, I was yeah. almost a, a flight attendant for American, but I was too short. Well, yeah. really, to tell you how truly old I am, I interviewed for Pan Am. <laughs> <laughs> And I made it through three interviews. I was so excited. I did. And then at the end, they asked you how tall you are, and I told them the truth. I said five, five, one and a half. We had, back then, you had to be five foot two. Or, and the tallest you could be was six foot two. And it did make sense because I can't really reach the overhead bin, so that's not very safe, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, a lot of those, my dad was the union rep for a lot of the old TWA flight attendants, and then... I don't mean old as in they were old then. I mean was passe. Became a former. Became American. A lot of those women are my age. The pay has gone down. The customers are more rude. It's all a sliding scale of horrible at American. (laughs) And I don't blame a goddamn one of them. They're all just like, one more incident and I'm going to fucking snap. I get it. I get it. I get it. But that's why... Sometimes it's a little more refreshing to go on Delta where they they welcome have you. they <laughs> welcome you and they're happy and their contracts have been um, signed and they're happy about it. Like I feel like American, those ladies are my age and they're like, two more years of this shit and I am <laughs> out of here. And but they gotta finish it to get the perks. Like yeah. yeah they I, never make you feel excited. They don't ever see me that happy. And I get why they're not. I would not be either. It'd be like I mean, I don't know. I don't want to say working in a bar, but, or doing what I do. You're traveling your whole life, but the conditions each year keep getting shittier. Right. And then, you know, benefits get taken away and all that crap. Anyway, moving on. What are we drinking? We have a Bud Light seltzer. <laughs> Not just Bud Light. I'm going seltzer, too, people. Woo! Yeah, well, because I've been in Missouri so much, in St. Louis, and the Lake of the Ozarks so much, I thought I would go with that. It's a, it's a summer seltzer. It's right. time for summer seltzers, what people. Kind of I don't really understand. Um, apple slices, crayon, crayon apple. So it kind of tastes like a... Cosmopolitan. Yeah, Cosmo. It's a little sweet. I mean, you're not going to drink six of these. I don't think a lot of people... A lot of people shouldn't drink six seltzers <laughs> anyway. Well, I could drink six limes because it just yeah. tastes like you're, you're... I don't know. It's like gin and tonic without the gin. I get it. Yeah, this is... So do you like it? Do you like it? I don't love it. Okay. Truth be told, it's too sweet for me. 
But like, um, one of the guys that comes over to the house to help me do stuff sometimes, I gave him the green apple one, and yeah. he loved it. He wanted more. I'm like, well, you can have whatever came in that 12 pack I bought because I don't like that either. I don't like the sweet ones, but that's just me. But it's t- it's time for seltzers because it's summertime. You don't get as bloated. Don't have to go to the bathroom as much. Thumbs up. There you go. So, PSA, what's your uh, favorite seltzer? My favorite is um, Ruby Grapefruit. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, that's not a Bud Light one. No. No, yeah. it's just uh, they're into like cherry. Uh, yeah, they're yeah they don't. They're not nailing it, and they still keep losing. I'm going to tell you a little story about the CEO. That guy at Bud Light doesn't get fired, fired, fired. Oh my God, it's he does. He still doesn't get it. Twenty eight like billion they've lost. They had to close a not billion, probably million. They it's in the article. They had to close a bottling plant because nobody's buying the bottles of Bud Light. Like it is, it is a disaster, and he just has a shovel and keeps digging the hole deeper. And deeper, and if you think you're getting rid of Dylan, oh, you you are not. Dylan is nope. back and says uh, she's getting death threats, which I'm sure she is. Yeah. And then Bud Light didn't help her. Probably didn't. Nope. Well, you know, you did it, Bud Light. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's no easy way out. The children are mouthy. It has the, nothing to the, do even with trans. It's just mouthy. No, the children, when they feel they've been wronged, <laughs> you better watch the fuck out. People my age that felt wrong, we just mumbled and walked around and went, that was bullshit, man. But we didn't get have Instagram to get on. We had no one to tell. And nobody likes a sad clown, so you don't go bitching around your friends. You're not going to have any friends anymore. They jump right on TikTok. Here's another way they fucked me over. And let me tell you about this. Whew. Careful who you hire. Um, the people, the children, they can do anything they want. They'll get you. So that's what are we going to try for our summer snacks? How about a Ruffles Honey Habanero? It doesn't sound like it's for me. It's a limited edition. Probably because they're not sure either. Mm-hmm. No. No. It's sweet. The honey would. The honey. That. It's hot though. The habanero. Also, yeah. Yeah. No, for me to say no to a potato chip is hard. And I'm voting no. It's too hot. It ruins the whole idea of the potato chip. Okay. All right. So my favorite pizza in the whole world is Emo's in St. Louis. It's only in Missouri. And uh, they have a wing sauce now. Yes. Yes. Which I've never tried because I've never eaten wings because I won't eat wings there. Because I'm there for the pizza. So here we go. If you're in Missouri or nearby, you can you can get it online too. Sweet and tangy wing sauce. Uh-huh. Nope. No. Nope. It's fine. Okay. I'd stick with regular. Regular wing sauce? N- yeah. Buffalo. buffalo. Yeah. Okay. I'm a buffalo wing person. Like All it. said and done. All right, termites. Do we have any queen news? Well, where's she at? Cher has been very quiet. I think she's on the hunt for a new boyfriend. That's maybe what I'm guessing. Young, maybe a youngster. Well, she already had that youngster. Maybe she should go a little older than that. <laughs> let's the let's go 19. <laughs> hmm? Hmm? Shall we? Hmm? Hmm? Oh. Tanya's on tour. I don't remember. Tanya's out on tour. Stevie's on tour. And I'm sad because I thought I was going to get to go, but other things have come up. And the lady behind me in the green, Tay Tay. Loving Tay Tay. You're going, paddles. You're going. The Taylor Swift. The Tay Tay. <laughs> so all the turbines that are yelling, Paddles is oh going. Oh, my God. Yep. Oh, my God. Do you want me to tell you where? Yes. No. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh not going to tell you where. You're going to have to guess on the calendar. She's not here. She's been here. She's not in Nashville. Oh, roaches. It's going to have to be outside of this area. Why are you not excited? Are you going? Are you going? Yes, I'm going. Okay. Bob and Clark are going. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Um, I can't believe it. And I got to say, like last week when I said what I was I a say? waste of a ticket, I didn't mean that I'm a waste. I'm just oh saying there's people that know more and love her more than me. me? I feel I you. Do. Right. Yeah. Maybe I'll just huh. sell the, your ticket and give you my ticket. And what? then you could... <laughs> 
Because I can make a shit ton of money. I'm on StubHub. I know what's going on. Are you coming with me? Yes. Do I get to sit with you? Five hours I'm going to stand there. This is is fantastic. I'll really love it if she plays the one song I know over and over and over. (laughs) Hey, it's me. I'm the problem. It's me. It's me. (laughs) It's me. (laughs) No, I'm doing a crash course in studying Tay-Tay songs. I'll be ready. Last week, when I was sitting around. Because I fed your cat. <laughs> yeah, somebody needs to feed the babies. Oh. Somebody needs to feed the children here. Bob Clark is on? No, I got, I got um, a kid on Rover. Do you guys ever use Rover.com? You use me too. You too, but sometimes you, you have shit going on. Um, oh. Rover is an app, and they tell you all the children. Are that going? are in your area that going? will come and feed your cats or your dogs, and you can see their little profile. It's wonderful. That's great. And I have a wonderful um, one of the children. Her name is Aubrey, oh. and um, she even takes pictures of them, oh. so I feel better. Oh. Yeah. Where are we going? I'm not telling you. What? I'm not telling you where it is. Oh, my God. Yeah. This is the best thing that's ever happened. You're going to have to stand for five hours. I'm so excited. Far, far, far in the back. Not, not all the way in the back, but... I have to Google if they serve but alcohol. If they serve alcohol, you don't even know where you're going. All, all Taylor Swift shows are in the stadium. I'll never forget when I got stopped at the Canadian border and they kept me hostage for hours and hours and hours for a reason I never did find out because I had all my paperwork. Mm-hmm. It was in Vancouver. And then this guy was super duper serious and I was in like the bad child room, uh-huh. the problem child room, and I hadn't done anything. I hadn't even drank. And he was like... Is there going to be alcohol at the venue you're performing at? And that's when I lost my mind. And I go, I certainly fucking hope so, because after what you people have put me through, if there's not alcohol at the end of this road, I don't care to go down this road. <laughs> and he goes, ma'am, we don't, we don't use cursing here. And then he walked me away and put me in time out again. I got my ass handed to me. Are we going to Kansas City? No, we're no. not going to Kansas City. Although Kansas City's already over. Hang on. Well, the, stadium. That's why we're not going to Kansas City. I'm not telling you on this podcast. You have to wait till next week. Seattle, I like Seattle. Seattle's too far. Yeah. Los Angeles. Too far. Too hard. Too crowded. Well, that's it. Otherwise, we're going to Paris, which is also crazy. Maybe Paris. Yeah, no. Great. no. No. Paris is on fire right now, and did the children you, are revolting. Did you get us outfits? <laughs> no, I did get us outfits. That's up to you. Oh, my God. And you better get Bob and Clark whatever you get for me. Okay. They're going to want a shirt. You are doing the work of the Lord. I am doing the work of the oh. Lord, one bit at a time. And guess who else is always doing the work of the Lord? Moving on. Dolly Parton. You want to move on? And my this? queen, you, you just sit with yourself and digest that and pay attention to this episode. All right. I'll tell you next week more details. So great. <laughs> this is great because I've been to this town. So yeah. there's this tiny town in Ireland called Listal. I'm sure I'm saying it right. Listal is the way they say it. But it's on the way to catch a ferry to get up or down from the hinch where I like to golf. And I never knew this town was so so creative. Um, over a thousand people uh-huh. dressed like country singer Dolly Parton gathered in Listall, Ireland, hoping to set the world record, held at an outdoor soccer field. The event attracted both locals and out-of-towners in blonde wigs and cowboy hats. According to the Irish Examiner, attendees were required to don a full head-to-toe Dolly costume and be instantly recognizable as a singer. Many participants went as far as stuffing their shirts with inflated balloons. Mo- most of them. There's only 5,000 people in the town, and 1,000 did it. <laughs> well, I mean, they came from out of town, too. But, like, everybody's in on it. Um, currently, the Guinness World Record officials are reviewing the gathering for certification. The process should take about 8 to 12 weeks. But no one else has attempted to set the royal record. However, Listal, the town, is already in the books for having hosted the bigger gathering of people dressed up in nuns' habits. Look oh, at them having oh, fun yeah. city council meetings. <laughs> okay, or, order of business. What are we dressing up like next month? Hmm? 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 Tay-Tay. Tay-Tay, if you dressed up like it, wouldn't be instantly recognizable. Cher? Yes. Yeah. Stevie? Yeah. Because yes. I've seen the Stevie people that come as witches. Yeah. Yeah. Um, proceeds from the occasion from the occasion were donated to cancer charities at the Cary Hospice Foundation. Uh, uh, Dolly Day has its own Instagram account. Oh, I'm gonna have to go look on that. Cool. 
We're not sure if, Do- if Dolly herself knows about the crowd at Lizzo, but the Irish Examiner tells us one event goer plans to show her some photos. Um, Eugene Naughton, one of the presidents of, the, of Dollywood, boasts a personal relationship with the country star. He hopes after seeing the event held in her honor, she'll take the time <coughs> to visit the Irish town. Well, she might, but uh, Dolly's getting up there a little bit, and I'm not sure that international travel is on the books. But maybe well, they should have tried to get her to come that day. She's in Europe now, though. She's in Europe now? I think so. I don't know. Where do you hear these things? Because Dax said that we saw. Oh. Yeah. Dax told you that. You told me that. Dax told me that, and I told you that. Yeah. Next Look time. at me not remembering shit. Maybe I'll just. This is what happens when you hang out with the 80 somethings. It's just, what? Huh? What? Did you? What? Did you do it? Update! (laughs) (laughs) My friend Clark sent me this as of Bob and Clark, who are the Big Bed Bath and Beyond fans. Uh Clark said, now they can stay. This is great news because now you can stay home and drink and still shop. Bed Bath and Beyond will live on, online at least. After Overstock.com acquired the bankrupt's retail chain's intellectual property assets for $21 million, the online retailer Overstock is dumping its name online and will become Bed Bath and Beyond. So see, Overstock will become Bed Bath and Beyond. Very wow. exciting. Which declared bankruptcy earlier this year. Overstock.com's CEO Jonathan Johnson. Now, if your last name's Jonathan Johnson, do you name your kid John? Well, actually, I knew a John Johnson. He lived in Wisconsin. No, this was the guy who ran the DC improv. His name was John Johnson. He's not part of a Wisconsin folklore song. I, like I don't think he is. Um, the switcheroo to a very recognizable brand was cheered on Wall Street. Shares of Overstock soared nearly 20%. The deal doesn't include Bed Bath & Beyond stores, the last of which are to be shuttered today, or the Bye Bye Baby chain. I've never heard of Bye Bye Baby, but I don't have a baby. I've seen I'm short a baby. Um, <laughs> so there you go. Don't cry, Bed Bath & Beyond, people. It's not dying after all that. Update! Okay, so Sevierville, Tennessee, just got the world's largest Bucky's, uh-huh. but it's not lasting long because yeah. Florida is getting it, going to have the next one. The one in Tennessee is 74,000 square feet, but the upcoming Marion County spot will have, will you Google, if you can concentrate, um, please, up where the is the new, uh, um, is it in Ocala? See if the new Bucky's is going in Ocala, Florida. Ron DeSantis says he wants to step on the gas to construct the massive gas station. Most Bucky locations are in Texas, but there's one in Daytona Beach and St. John's County. Near Ocala. Oh, it's near it's Ocala. Ocala. Yeah. Let me get out of what T-shirt What? Yeah, you, yeah, I know. You're. Not, I've lost you for this whole episode. I should have waited to the end. How am I supposed to do this on my own? God. Ocala. Damn. Ocala. Yeah. You're going to have the next biggest one. Um, what yeah. color shirt do you want? What color shirt? Yeah. Surprise me. Okay. <laughs> I would like a Stevie Nicks shirt. <laughs> Tay Tay likes Stevie. She yeah. wrote a song for her. Yeah. So why, why can't I wear a Stevie shirt? Yeah. Great. I'll do that. Ocala. When's that done? That's going to be done soon. And that, so the, the one in Tennessee is only going to be the largest one for a, a, a hot minute. Okay. Um, oh, no. It's going to take years. They haven't. Sorry. No. So, Sevierville, enjoy your crown while you yeah. have it. Yeah. Enjoy your crown. Um, oh, why did I put this in my notes? Wait. Oh, my God. Okay. We're moving on to, uh, holy shit, they found it. Okay. And I have quite a few of them. Great. Yeah. But they're, they're not complicated. So, my little guys and gals in um, Pompeii, that are constantly digging, they discovered a giant, um, it, it was a half crumbled wall, and there was a giant fresco of a pizza. How awesome is oh, that? Wow. So even back then, they these fine Italians yeah. were working, <laughs> excuse me, what? their butts off. Celebrating pizza. Yeah. yeah. They uncovered a painting which depicts 
what might be the precursor to the Italian pizza. It's a flatbread depicted in the 2,000-year-old fresco. Maybe a distant ancestor of the modern dish. It looks like a flatbread now. More like a flatbread than a pizza, but they're really the same. Aren't they really talking about the same shit? I think so. It lacks the class. It lacks the classic ingredients to be technically considered a pizza. The fresco was found in the hall of a house next to a bakery during recent digs at the site in southern Italy. The discovery was made this year during new excavations of Reggio the Ninth in the center of Pompeii, or the Centre, if you will. Centre. I love it when people are like out in the suburbs. It's the shopping Centre. Oh, we're gonna get French <laughs> right out here in the suburbs of St. Louis. We're uh-huh. just gonna, yeah. Um, that's just, it's so great, though, that it, back then they were just all excited about their pizza. Just showing you, as a people, we not really, really haven't really changed that much. No. 2,000 years ago, what are we having for dinner, honey? I don't know. How about the picture of the shit on the wall? Great. Oh, let's get a pizza. pizza. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit, they found it. This is great. This would be Jay Leno's ultimate, ultimate dream. In the world of classic cars, few stories are as captivating as the discovery of a long-forgotten automotive treasure. Imagine the excitement when a man stumbled upon a garage that had been locked for over five decades, only to find a rare 1930s Duesenberg inside. Oh, wow. Now, I don't even know what those were. I had to look it up. The extraordinary find has sparked curiosity and fascination of car enthusiasts around the world, bringing attention to the legendary Duesenberg Marquee and its remarkable history. Leno's probably already up there. Nah, I'll give you thirty-five thousand. <laughs> um, oh, okay, is that too low? Okay, how about seven million? I'll give you seven million. Um, Mavis will let me have it. I already talked to her. We got room to park it. <laughs> <laughs> the Duesenberg Model J was produced from nineteen twenty-eight to nineteen thirty-seven. Uh, remains one of the most coveted and sought-after classic cars to this day. Its iconic status is attributed to its exceptional craftsmanship, powerful performance, and luxurious design. What makes this discovery even more extraordinary was the fact that Duesenberg Model J, I might not even be saying that right, was incredibly limited, uh, an incredibly limited production vehicle. Only 25 were ever made. Wow. And this guy found a perfect one. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm sure Leno hasn't slept since he's seen this. <laughs> no. Wait, wait, where's he at? How did I get there? Can I drive it? <laughs> um... Uh, the Duesenberg brand ha- ha- uh, itself holds a storied past. Founded by brothers Fred and Augie Duesenberg in 1913, the company quickly gained a reputation for building high-performance automobiles that were ahead of their time. Um, so they were super powerful. Now, wait till you see. We'll put a picture in the notes. The picture of this car. Okay. It is awesome. gorgeous. The discovery of the abandoned 30s Duesenberg locked in a garage is nothing short of a time capsule. The car, untouched for half of a century, offers a glimpse into the path past in the exquisite, cra- exquisite craftsmanship and the de- design that defined the decade. Restoring it, blah, blah, blah. They don't really need to. I mean, it's in perfect condition. Yeah. Yeah. Even I could probably shine it up and not even know what I'm doing. Holy shit, they found it. Oh, moving on. All right. Holy shit, they found it. Yeah, because it's a tiny creature. Creature with triangular head found lurking on cliffs in Vietnam, and it's a brand new species. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, God. It's a lizard type. The gecko looks like a gecko. Yeah. Tucked among the cliff, cliffs in northern Vietnam, a slender creature scampered along the rocky surface several feet above off the ground. Passing scientists noted the creature and discovered a new species. Research set out to survey animals in the forest in the cliffs of Long Ku. According to his published, they were looking for frogs, lizards, or snakes, or amphibians, and other re- reptiles. One night, as the researchers explored a rocky habitat, they spotted a lizard lurking in the cliff several feet above the ground, the study said. They captured seven lizards, and after taking a cl- closer look, they realized they found a brand new species of gecko. Cool. Yeah, he looks just like, well, the um, gecko lizard. Oh, cool. The new species, let's let Kathleen pronounce this at the new at the next um, <laughs> gathering of scientists. Uh-huh. Hemiphilodactylus lung cuteness. Sure oh, wow. It's two there? words. No, it's two separate words. Oh, boy. It has a triangular head, and it can grow up to three and a half inches. Yeah, he's kind of crazy looking. But see, we're still finding new species. This is why when people say, oh, there's no Bigfoot, oh, there's no this or that. Now I do understand those are a little larger, but... <laughs> It doesn't mean it can't happen. Um, 
All right. This isn't funny because the man died. <laughs> but. Way to get ahead of it. The, yeah, just so people don't think I'm cruel. Um, this was the headline that made me read it. Man dies after trying to drink all 21 cocktails on the menu during a family vacation in Jamaica. I love everything about that. Well, we would do that. I think the thing that got me was you're with your family. <laughs> like, I expect this out of maybe a college student who's with a bunch of college kids. Right. And they're like, dude, do it, man. Drink every fucking one of them. Okay, man, I'll show you. Are you okay, man? I should taste them, not drink the whole thing. Well, somebody must have thrown down a challenge flag. Um, a UK man on vacation with his family in Jamaica died after attempting to partake in a challenge that involved drinking all 21 cocktails featured on the bar's menu. Timothy Southern had finished about 12 of the menu's cocktails when he returned to his hotel room at the Royal Decameron Club, uh, Caribbean and St. Anne, where he later died. He made it through 12. Pathologist said the 53-year-old Stratford man's, um, Staffordshire man's cause of death was acute gastroenteritis due to alcohol consumption. I mean... <laughs> Uh, initial investigation uh, found that he'd been drinking brandy and beer throughout the morning. Wow. Just a, People just get too, especially non, um, well, I wouldn't say, I, people that go on vacation to the islands yeah. get way too carried away out of the gate. I'm one of them. The hair I mean, where, where else would you see me drinking a Coco Loco? <laughs> Nowhere. But, yeah. uh, you know, I get to Jamaica and I'm like, what's that? Yeah. Yeah, I want to try it, but I wouldn't. He's a skinny dude, too. Rum can be dangerous. At some point during the day, Timothy met two Canadian women. This is your fault, pal. Who were celebrating a birthday. <laughs> his family members on the trip say they tried in vain to help him. He was on his back choking. I put him in the recovery position and screamed for an ambulance. He was oh. making a, a gurgling sounds. As soon as he was in the recovery, he vomited. I was shouting his name. I mean... Uh, the family has expressed outrage and dissatisfaction with the emergency crews who tried to save him in his hotel, claiming they were unprepared to take care of him. Well, okay, they might have been. But you should also know that when you're down in the islands, or if you drink the whole menu, there may not be someone there qualified to help you. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. You are not at, at you know, in New York City where we can call an ambulance immediately. Like, when the nurse arrived, I asked if an ambulance had been called. She said no. I thought she would take over, but that was not the case. I noticed he was starting to lose temperature. Checked his pulse, and I couldn't find it. She said he had a pulse. I was starting to lose it. I got a full look at his face, and I thought he'd passed away. The relative claimed that the nurse was not adequately trained in providing life-saving measures. I said, don't just sit there looking at him. Start CPR. She only gave him chest compressions. Even I could do that because I've seen it on Law & Order. <laughs> Maybe if you she had what known what he was school. doing, maybe she would still be here. Okay, well, maybe, but, you know, it's the same reason you're not going to see me zip lining in Mexico or shit like that. You don't know what their medical services are. Right. They could be better. I don't know. Right. Clearly, not. this Jamaican thing, not so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my God. Here is my nightmare. The world's biggest cruise ship is almost ready. <laughs> There's, they have ads for it already on TV. It's called what? the Icon of the Sea. You, this, a vessel that's it's seven times the ti seven times the Titanic. Oh God! Well, the Titanic now that you look at it nowadays, compared to cruise ships, does look pretty tiny. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> it seems so big in the movie, but yeah. a vessel that's set to be the world's biggest cruise ship, has completed construction at a shipyard in Finland and has made its way into the uh, first four way into open water uh, for sea trials ahead of likely delivery in October. Royal Caribbean's international icon of the seas is a mammoth 1,200 feet long. 1,200? Yeah. Wow. And will weigh um, 250 tons. Yeah. For comparison, that's like trying to keep two CN... Towers afloat. What's a CN tower? It's a Toronto. Toronto? Mm -hmm. The so, CN towers? Yeah, it looks like the CN tower is one. And it looks like the Space Needle. The Space Needle? It looks like mm. the Space Needle, but um, obviously taller. This is where I freak out. Okay. 
because I know so many comedians that have done gigs on cruise ships, and I know about the crew bars. I know about way too much shit about a cruise ship I should never know. Which, in nothing, the more secrets that are revealed to me, the even less reason I want to go. Not that there's anything that can get me to want to go. Right. But uh, this is where I find it ridiculous. This ship will hold 5,600 passengers and 2,300 crew members. Wow. So 56, that's not, that 70, it's 8,000 people. 8,000 people. Can you imagine dinner? On a ship that has been cut off from services. Right. There's no hospital, no, no fire, real fire department, mm. no. Wow. And I'm not even a worry wart. I don't even care about stuff like that normally. But when you get this many people, I think it's because I don't understand science and I don't understand how it's floating. I can help you with that. I don't want to understand. This okay. is why I flunk science. My oh. brain just goes, I don't care. It floats. It's fine. Whatever. And I do know the why this is they don't, they don't feel so sturdy, though, because the buoyancy, what's keeping us afloat, is exactly why we are man easily manipulated by waves. We're just... We're like a cork, like a fishing cork. Everything you just said is science. Well, it's also me just out there going, this thing's too goddamn big and there's too much air in it, and that's why this <laughs> wave is going to flip us over. Totally. Um, the boat's uh, piece de resistance will be the world's largest water park. Uh, uh, <laughs> there's another reason. It was named Category 6. It will feature six record water-breaking slides, but most... But guess who want a more leisurely experience can relax in the boat seven pools and nine whirlpools. Oh. Uh, it's a leading shipbuilder in Turku, Finland. Uh, the current largest one is the Wonder of the Seas, which made its inaugural voyage last year and a slight teensier 1,180 uh, feet in length with a mere 18 decks to explore. Uh, here's the other thing. Deck after deck after deck. What they're not saying is 18 of the decks, 16 all look exactly alike. Oh, God. You, 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 well, well, like the one Royal Caribbean we went on for the Lose Cruise deal, um, the, the one deck has all the stuff, the shuffleboard, the board, the pool, and then there might be another deck. But other than that, mm -hmm. it's deck after deck after of the same the rooms. rooms. Yeah. yeah, rooms. Can you imagine if something went haywire? Now you've got 8,000 people in a panic. And the crew's going to beat you to it, yeah. the, the workers, because they know exactly what to do exactly. to, if it goes, you know, nutty. Um, 2,600 workers wow. a day for the sea trials. Hundreds of specialists were on board to assess performances over four days. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Buzz about the ship has advanced sales have been uh, record-breaking. Mm. <laughs> well, if any of you termites go, I want to hear about it. Yes. October. Ron's mom loves the cruise. She'll Ron, the first one. She might. She might tell him. Now, Ron, I was looking and I thought you could just buy me a Thank ticket. Oh, speaking of drinking, <laughs> I would. Well, okay. cruise ships drinking. Uh -huh. So I don't really pay attention to the College World Series of baseball, but I was kind of watching because of my friend Kathy. Um, she's a big LSU person, uh -huh. and uh, so they won. And they lost yeah. a lot the second game. It was embarrassing, like 23 to 2 or some shit. Um, yeah. uh, a Baton Rouge lawyer, this is what, the Louisiana people, their fans, it was fun just watching their fans. They're a whole separate breed right. of crazy fun. Mm -hmm. But like, whoo hoo, I don't know how far I'd go in the woods with them. Right. Let's put it that way. Right. Last call, a Baton Rouge lawyer who bought 44 thousand worth of rally jello shots on the final day of the college world series <laughs> he bought forty four thousand dollars worth of jello shots first of all a jello shot's just not that expensive no. it's one shot of vodka in shitty jello and i still love them i don't care how old i'm gonna be i always like a jello shot because I, so I like cherry jello yeah. um new record eight thousand eight hundred and eighty eight rally shots on Get Gordon at Rocco's today with proceeds supporting local food banks. Records are meant to be broken. Uh, go Tigers. And then it's spelled it French way, G-A-O-U. -E. Uh, the article said, Jesus Christ, over 40,000 wor worth of jello shots. LSU shot total has been nearing 
has to be nearing Florida's run total from yesterday. Ha ha. Okay, I'm sorry I had to make a joke, but at the end of the day, the story is awesome. This guy buying around in 9,000 shots has to uh, has to be a feeling like no other, but buying around 9,000 ra- uh, rally shots has a whole different tier itself. An LSU fan, um, yeah, I guess he just didn't care. Wow. How would you make them, though? If I was the bar, I couldn't make them by the time we were closed. Who's got that much jello? You had a pre-order. You have to. Yeah. Who's got that? Just a, <laughs> my mom's the old box of jello to make the jello. <laughs> or you could go buy the pre ones like I eat, but those are kind of pricey to make jello shots out yeah. of. Yeah. Um, wow. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Nobody's going to be able to break the record. Unless Princeton makes the College World Series and Jeff Bezos buys the whole fucking jello industry. <laughs> he that's something he would do too. Well, you know who would definitely do it is Mattress Mac. I'm surprised he hasn't gotten involved totally. in this. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. You can't break my record because I bought all the jello forever. <laughs> you can't have it. Nah, 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 nah. Speaking of drinking. <laughs> Since we're on my drinking train um, with funny drinking story. Well, this isn't funny. This is a, quite the matter of contention. Um, Anheuser-Busch denies claims that it fired two top marketing execs, execs responsible for Bud Light's disaster, disastrous Dylan Mulvaney campaign and maintains that the pair are on a leave of absence. No! No! no. no, no, no. You just got to come out and say it was a bad idea yeah. Beer shouldn't be political either which way. It should have pictures of dogs and sports and Clydesdales. Mm -hmm. Uh, We went political. What? Bloodhounds. Bloodhounds, one of my favorite. Any hound. Um, uh, You know, we jumped the shark there a little bit. We went political and beer is not supposed to be. um, It's supposed to be a vacation from thinking. That's what I'm supposed to do when I drink beer. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Beer. A vacation from thinking. Yes. I think, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't want to think about, and I certainly don't want to think about hard things, no. politics, no, who's no, on which no, side. No, no, no. So what they should say, this guy, the CEO, uh, he should say, yeah, we fired him. Yeah. It was a, a, a terrible idea, mm-hmm. not because Dylan is trans, but because mm-hmm. it doesn't fit with the product on anything we've ever, and now they have a, uh, a new ad, and it's, uh, no, I think there's a country star in it. No, 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 no. This is full-grown men, and they sit in a chair and go, ugh. They grunt and have a Bud Light. I swear to God, it's the whole Google grunting men in Bud Light, Bud Light ad. Earrings for Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> Earrings for Taylor Swift concert. Drunk men. This is what they're trying to c- combat Dylan with guy guys. Oh my God. Oh, right, it's Travis Kelsey and someone else. The, the, he's a football player for Kansas City Chiefs, if you don't know that. And another one. Is there another chief in there? Guy guys. You know, yeah, me ha, me strong, huh? Me strong. <laughs> me tough, me man. Um, which I like that ad, too. I don't care. I don't care about any of them. Oh, it's the grunts ad. It's yeah. the grunts ad. We're putting it in the trunk. All right. Yeah. Well, Love it. they still won't say. They, they, you're, you don't get fired for this after all of the money that's been lost. It just didn't. The idea didn't work. I don't even care why. It was such a failure. We've lost money. You're fired. Right. It's called backyard grunts. Backyard grunts. That's, that's the ad. So How did someone pitch that in the advertising meeting? Some <laughs> ad agency went, "Look, you guys are in a lot of trouble. Oh, you need yeah. your beer to look like it is caveman beer." They're like, I'm surprised it's just not caveman with clubs hitting each other with that. Oh. Who never holds the beer? Travis, Travis Kelsey. Kelsey. Mm. So they're saying that they took a leave of absence. And then he went on to say, we're not sure we won't work, won't work with Dylan again. What are you doing? Stop talking. It's amazing. Stop talking. Look, Dylan got a lot of mileage out of this. Um, Dylan will be fine. <laughs> Do you care about your beer? I mean... I look. I'm drinking out of now. In fairness, I did own this glass 
long before the controversy, but but I'm not wrecking it. I'm not going to no. pull a kid rock and go shoot my own glassware apart. Exactly. This is fancy glassware when you have company. Hey, would you Favorite like a Bud Light glass? glass? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I think I, I had an article on how much they've lost. It's millions and millions. It's like they're, everything's down 28%. So whatever the whatever your mistake was, and it's summertime. Yeah, it's summertime when people are drinking the most beer um, that they can out there. Oh, oh this my god, good. this is really creepy. I'm moving on. Okay. Now, thankfully, I've never seen one of these, and if I did, I don't know. I think I'd either run away or try to throw a rock at it. Huh. Another air breathing predatory snakehead fish discovered in Missouri. A fish that can live without water for days. It's on land. And it's a fish. But it looks like a snake. It grows up to three feet long, was found again in Missouri. It's the second time a northern snakehead was found in the state since 2019. The invasive fish was caught May 19th at the Duck Creek Conservation Area in Wayne County. The department said s- staff members spent several days after looking for more snakeheads but couldn't find any. Oh, if there's one out there walking around the shore a drinking a Bud Light, there's a lot more. <laughs> uh-huh. Offering some hope that the fish was present in low numbers. Um, wow. Originally from Asia, they're a delic- delicacy believed to have healing powers. Northern snakeheads are aggressive predators, pre- prey- predators preying on native species and competing for resources. They can grow three feet in length. The f- you should see its face. It's got little fucking piranha teeth, too. The fish has a wide temperature tolerance. It can spawn multiple times in a year. It can survive in low oxygenated waters. Um, by horrible. It can breathe air. Oh, God. Yeah. Hmm. They're a beast. And we can't have them because they're going to re- wreck the whole ecosystem. So how did we get one to begin with? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, if you catch it... Um, do not release the fish or throw it on the bank, as it could migrate back to the water on its own. Oh, my God. <laughs> Can you wow. imagine just seeing a fish just walking along, going, yeah, I'm heading back to the water. <laughs> Bye. Creepy. Nice. Creepy. Nice. Um, how many people... Oh, my God, I love this. Let's see how you termites. Um, I don't expect most of you to know this. I only know this because I live on the road. <laughs> Um, there's two states in America that do not let you pump your own gas. Now, the first time I encountered this in New Jersey, Uh I pulled up to a gas station thinking, like, um, I grew up, I'm going to get out of this car and pump (laughs) some gas. Uh And immediately three men approached my car. They're lucky (laughs) I didn't have a weapon because I thought I was being robbed. I'm like, get the fuck away from the car. Like, it was, it was very, it was like a, a thing. Yeah. And so I cracked the window a little bit. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> can I and he's you? like, well, ma'am, how much gas did you want? I go, I can do it. Right. He goes, you're not allowed to do it. I was like, what? We're, have we time traveled? Right. You know what? If you're going to come out here and pump my gas uh-huh. and do my windshield, then let's really go 50s and come out on roller skates and bring me a cheeseburger. <laughs> like really make it like um, a full service. Um, <laughs> hey, can I get you a chocolate shake? Uh-huh. And then skate around the car and I'll check my oil. And I just thought it was this law. These laws are so old. They were saying the general public could not handle being, they couldn't handle be, touching anything that had gas in it. Wow. Now, sometimes in Missouri, when I see people smoking while they're pumping their own gas, which wow. I've seen numerous times, I think maybe those laws were correct. Maybe we are too stupid to be able to handle gas. But you know what? Uh, two, only two states are still doing it. New Jersey, and I think everybody knows about that. Mm-hmm. And here's the off the beaten path state that does it. Oregon. Really? Yep. I wouldn't have guessed that. I wouldn't have either. I thought it'd be like New Hampshire. Yeah. Like an older, you know, one of the tradition, the way back states. Yeah. Oregon seems to, every man for himself. Pioneer life. Pioneery. Mm-hmm. Um, you do you. Yeah. Uh, Bend, Oregon, which what? That's where the golf course is I've always wanted to go to, and uh, nobody will take me. I'll go with you. Yeah, but it's really expensive, and it's hard to get to. So are Taylor Swift tickets, but you did it. Yeah. 
Well, I don't want to brag and say I, I've I've had some weekends that were profitable this year, but I did get myself to Taco Bell Crocs. Did you really? Yeah. Oh, where are they? I'll show them next week. Okay. And they fit true to size. Cool. In case you're trying to get some. Um, <laughs> if you visited Oregon, the, as the author currently is, you have likely had the moment of cognitive dissonance in which you hop into your vehicle at a gas station to fill your tank just as you do anywhere, then discover or remember that you must yield the pump handle to an earnest and sometimes surly gas station attendant who intercepts you and really doesn't want you stealing their job. Well, that's about to change in Oregon. Lawmakers give um, last week gave final approval to a bill that ends the state bans on self-service gas pumps, a uh, prohibition that has been in place since 1951. The change will affect, um, take effect as soon as possible after Governor Tina Kotek signs the new bill into law. Okay. The uh, Oregonian newspaper says that this leaves New Jersey as the only state remaining to require gas station attendance. Having pump attendance is really a vestige of the days in which most gas stations offered the f- option of full service. I do remember that, that as a kid. Full <laughs> itself. You could still go to full service when I was a kid. And someone would come out. Yeah, but it was a, yeah. yeah. Um, in those days, the attendant might do more than pump gas. He wa- yep, they would wash the windshield. Check the oil. Mm, no, sometimes. Inflate your tire. I guess if it was low. Put it. Pumping a flammable liquid was thought to be too dangerous for the average motorist. Oregon's clinging to the law also had to do with preserving entry-level jobs. That said, in an economy that is enjoying near full employment, stations have a hard time filling these jobs, causing motorists on uh, longer waits as few attendants uh, flip between several pumps. As a result, the oil companies want the law change. Pump that gas! The Northwest Grocery Association argued that allowing self-service wouldn't cost job because understaffing it had caused them to shut down half the available pumps anyway. A smaller matter, uh, as a smaller matter, the present system is just plain clunky for motorists, even when staffing is solid. I filled up the other day, and the attendant was very nice. She asked what grade of fuel I wanted, how much, then she asked if I was in a gas discount plan. Then she entered my phone number. Oh, okay. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Then she took the credit card, but after all the number budget, she forgot what grade and how much, and it had to ask again. Oh, okay, yeah. No. No. That's just an antiquated thing. Yes. People go, well, what about those jobs? Those, those people are just finding something else. We're not doing this. I mean, why not ride your horse into town and have a cobbler? It's ridiculous. Um. Well, so I'm saying an antiquated yeah. thing. Now, this is going to be a little bit of complaining on my part, okay? okay? But I feel like I'm complaining for everyone, not okay. just myself. Um, and really, I'm kind of on a tangent against Pete, Pete Buttigieg. Okay. I liked Pete. He's a Midwest guy. I want to like him. But he's the Secretary of Transportation now. And transportation is getting progressively worse, and no one's doing anything about it. Right. The incident with United Airlines. Incidents. Right. I don't fly United. Thankfully, Chicago is not. I love Chicago, but I don't love O'Hare. Right. And like my friend Dax had to fly out of O'Hare for years. And then you're kind of, you're yeah. a prisoner of United. Um, always better to live in a destination town, a tourist town like Nashville, because right. nobody dominates. Everybody comes in here. American Delta Southwest, Spirit of Sante, as I like to call it, the Spirit of Sante. Um, even a legion, even a legion, it's loud in. Yep. The real, re- so this is why, so Pete Buttigieg, when the United thing went down last week, all these people are stranded. Well, first of all, they caught the CEO flying privately. Same weekend. Same weekend. Yeah. I mean, you're fired. You're fired. Yeah. But this it's like Roger Goodell. They never get fired. Once you get to CEO level, I think it's all a bunch of friends. There's probably a hundred of them in the country. Yes. And they're not going to fuck over their friend. But, like, if I was the board, he, there has to be a board of uh, board. Oh, yeah. at United. Absolutely. I'm firing this guy. Company, Scott Kirby or something. Yeah. But also, Pete Buttigieg put out a video... People are standing in lines with kids crying. Old people don't know what to do. It's a, it's a goddamn mess. And right. he put out a video saying to go on the website to know your rights. Right. What? Yeah. 
That's how I feel about going on your website to learn my rights. Because you can learn your rights all you want. Uh And I have heard people that do know their rights. I don't know my rights. But when they regurgitate... I'm proud about that. I don't know my rights. Does anybody here not know their rights? Me. I do not know. Um, I'm just going to try to barter with you when I get up there. Um, But the people who do lay that crap on, Uh the people that are working there, now you have to remember the people working behind the... The, the check-in desk at United, they've also had it. They're frustrated. They're tired. Do you want to stand behind that counter and look at a sea of people that are pissed off? No. I quit, or I'd start drinking on the job, and then I'd get fired. But um, you can spout off your government rights all day long. This is where I don't think Pete's in touch with what's really happening. And they'll just go, well, you can do that and fill out these forms on the website. Now, do you want to go to San Diego right now or not? And then you just have to go along with whatever they say. Right. Well, here's your hotel voucher, if you could even get one. But it's at some shit hotel. It's not not. It's not fine. Right. It's not, like it's not even a Marriott Courtyard's fine. Holiday Express fine. It's some weird offbeat. I mean, I've been through this so 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 many times, and then you. It's getting worse. Yeah. How else am I supposed to go? A train? No, they can't stay on the tracks, and they're <laughs> all. Um, falling. crashing and falling. Um, we don't have any fast trains if you live in the Midwest or the South. Right. The East Coast kind of got that mastered, which is why I love a train ride. Um, but not for, you know, if you want to go to St. Louis to Chicago, you might as well drive. And then the train stations these days are going to drop you off pretty much somewhere in some bad neighborhood. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, and then what are you going to do? How are you going to get from your Uber? It's just, his video pissed me off like, Dude, don't get all technical now. You've got thousands of people on Fourth of July weekend, corporate people that only have two weeks a month, uh, two weeks a year off. You just screwed them out of what's going to be probably four days of their life. Yeah, and it's not cool. you're telling them to go on a website. Right. That's not. Right. But and then he blamed the storms. He blamed oh, Mother oh. Nature. Yeah. Well, this article says it's a perfect storm in more ways than one. Thousands of you. S airline passengers were stranded by stranded by flight cancellations and delays this week, causing chaos at airports heading into a busy Fourth of July weekend. On Thursday afternoon, 472 flights into and out of within the states had been act canceled. You're not going to tell me that is that many for weather, right? And more than 2,700 were delayed. My friend, I have a comedian friend, Tim Wilkins. He put a good thought on Twitter. He said, "Why do we have to pay up front? Why can't we?" sign a contract, and say, we'll pay when you complete the job. So if I'm going from St. Louis to Dallas, when I land in Dallas, the credit card will be approved. If I'm late, you get fined. Wow. Take Then we'd be. I'd be excited about being late. I'd be yeah. like, boom, another hundo. <laughs> boom, another hundo. It's <laughs> uh, a great idea. It's a great idea yeah. because we're paying in advance, and then they don't complete the contract. And they just blame it on bullshit. I don't, I don't want to know. I mean, sometimes, obviously, there's weather. I get it. You can't fix that. But this was way more than that. that. This is because they didn't hire enough staff after COVID. They haven't, and they kept that money. And then they do the stock rebuy. Because um, everybody else's flights were going. Yes. I mean, you can say Newark's the hub. So East Coast did get some storms. Yeah, but- it's just, it's just, it's just more, way more uh-huh. to it. Airlines across the United States were not able to recover quickly from the severe weather over the weekend due to lingering staff shortages from the pandemic. Exactly. Well, you know why you have a shortage? You're not paying enough. The job isn't lucrative or people would sign up. I make a really good living and thought about working at Bucky's because I saw how much they pay (laughs) on the thing. I was like, wow, (laughs) if I retire, if I could live now by a near a Bucky's this and I want to work in the beef brisket part. I already know what area I want to look at. Uh, but if you put out good money with benefits, you would have filled these positions. Yeah. But they're cheap, and the CEO is not. I know I'm really going off on this. I don't usually get this serious. But when you travel every week and see this shit, and here's the crazy thing, because I travel so much, and I usually am either on Delta or Southwest. Uh-huh. Um, Southwest for short, guys, no problem. Delta for the – and for all the reasons everybody already knows. But – I see this happening. It's happened to me 
but it's never as bad because I have a Delta lounge pass. My bartender friends are in the lounge. I, I, but to watch, I see old people like my parents' age. They actually go to that red phone that's on the wall. I know. Uh, yeah, that it's calls, horrifying. it calls 1974. No one's answering. <laughs> Don't, what are you doing? But nobody has, nobody's kind enough. I've told them, I've walked up to random old people and went, that phone's not going to help you. Right. You need to right. go to a, but it says it will. Flight problems. Yeah. Call. And when you, when you pick up that phone, there's no numbers to dial. They go straight to it, reservations. Right, straight yeah. to reservations. You're just going to be on hold. But anyway, so they didn't hire enough people back, but they took the PPP money. That's where I would have said, you are not getting the money until you can prove to me that you have restaffed the way you were, or you can't operate. You can't promise all this shit. (coughs) Most airlines made serious staff cuts in the early months of COVID. Rehiring (coughs) to meet the new renewed demand over three years has taken longer than expected because you're not paying properly. Right. As a result... The U.S. domestic airline capacity is still down 10% compared to pre-pandemic rates, the outlet said. The dip makes it harder to find new seats for passengers who initial flights have been canceled. This is the ongoing problem. This is where Pete needs to step in somehow and go nay-nay because um, one of these times recently I was flying back to St. Louis from (laughs) wherever, work or something, and then they said... Um, well, it's even worse in Nashville because it's a tourist town. Yeah. So if your flight, <clears throat> Atlanta to Nashville, storms in Atlanta, that was true. Uh, delay, delay, delay. Thank God they didn't cancel it because if they cancel it, problem is the next flight's already full. There's already so there's nowhere to go. There's no inventory. So it, it's, you just sit there yeah. until one seat becomes available. You know, if you bought first class, or business class, you're probably not getting that. No. Nope. So back in coach, middle seat, because that's what's going to pop open. Right. It's just bullshit. This Friday, June 30, is now expected to be the busiest air travel day, blah, blah, blah. We know all that. The airline is not running as optimally as it needs to run. We have improvements we can make, substantial improvements. Delta CEO Ed Bastion, well, that's not the CEO that got caught no. flying privately. Maybe yeah. they have more than one. Um United, which had logged the most cancellations, said on Wednesday it was all hands on deck mode on July 4th. And then you make the people who do show up crabbier. Right. The workers who show up that are trying to do the right thing. Yeah. You get, I mean, I can't imagine. Like, the, First of all, I appreciate anybody who works at an airport because I think, where did you park? Right. Especially in the fast the food ones. Is- like somebody's working at McDonald's in the airport. You could work at a McDonald's by your house. Yeah. Why put up with the... Maybe they pay a little more. I don't know. But um, imagine you pop out from behind the, the backstage of the airline counter uh-huh. and you go, are you shitting me? There's <laughs> 3,500 angry, angry people, people, rightfully so, and I've got to deal with, and it will never stop. Yeah. This is like the like lose job at the post office. and The mail never stops coming. FAA drama. United Headlines made, um, as it acts, thousands of flights which were flown out of Newark, its hub. The airline was still leading the way with 385 canceled flights. In a memo, see, now it says CEO Scott Kirby blamed the debacle on understaffing lower experience at the Federal Aviation Administration. So now he wow. <coughs> is blaming it on the FAA. <laughs> um, well, that's where Pete, Pete Buttigieg needs to come in. Our are we shorthanded? Right. Why do we have 9 million flights scheduled and you're canceling half of them? Right. And nobody um, else is. No. It led to massive cancellations, delays, diversions, as well as crews and aircraft out of position, and that put everyone behind the eight ball. When the weather did hit on Sunday, further complicating, uh, and was further compounded by FAA staffing shortages. Uh, uh, to be fair, it's not the fault of the current FAA, but they are responsible for pr- solving the problem they inherited. Right. I really thought Pete could upgrade shit. I did. Yeah. Well, what are you supposed to focus on? You think Secretary of Transportation sounds like an easier gig out of some that sound hard. Yeah. Like, I don't want economics or, like, I would think I might be able to do that. But then, I don't, nothing works. Well, TSA is a scam of Homeland Security. 
TSA so, isn't him, so he can't yeah. deal with that. Yeah, but he's responsible. He came down to Nashville and had a big ass party in the main terminal where they have completely fucked up security. Uh -huh. Every single person, my friend Dwarf, everybody that flies out of Nashville goes, it now takes 20 to 25 minutes longer because of the, quote, new, safer x-ray machines they put in. But here's, safer than what? We've never had a problem here. It was, that's, see, that's a conch, government contract bullshit move. Uh -huh. Somebody who made those machines yep. said these are better than your old ones, mm -hmm. so put them in every airport, and then the United States government went, went okay, mm -hmm. and signed off on them, and now we... Because the problem is the old belts just ran. So if your bag was on there and they were going to pull it, it got pulled when it was already out. Now it goes, and it sits to the side. Yeah. Yeah. I've really spent, I'm very sorry, Termos. I've spent a, <laughs> a lot of time on this. I really have to regroup. That's okay. Um, uh, uh, Kirby wants to blame it on the FAA. The top union at United suggests otherwise. A level of frustration or high, and it feels as if there's no solutions aside. This is a union guy. Especially for those who've been on duty for extended periods of time. The Association of Flight Attendants said of United Management in a, in a memo. In addition to st uh, problems with air traffic control staffing, the memo claimed there's also hours-long hold times with crew schedulers. Ooh. Well, because the hold times are currently in excess of three hours as crew scheduling works to update crews in chronological order, we are working to find solutions that receive that relieves some of the backlog. So they can't even staff their stuff because there's a crew. The, it's crew a three. Scheduling is, employed, is employed by the airline company. Yeah, right. Like United, but the, that's the union guy saying right. it yeah. is United's fault. Right. He's saying, yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. Do you have an airline ticket? Yep. Maybe. Maybe um, on United. No. Maybe. Oh. Yep. <laughs> I'm not telling you. <laughs> I'm not telling you. Uh. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. I'm nervous. And I need everyone to go look at this online. Because I, I did not believe it. And the schnotes. A microscopic handbag, smaller than a grain of salt, has been sold for $63,750 at auction. There's a picture of a person's index finger, and there's this tiny green... People have too much time. <laughs> they have too much time. Fucking and wow. they have too much money. And then I always think, what would Dolly Parton do with $63,000? She'd give it to the children. She'd give it to the children. Yeah. And books, so the children can read. A set of children's can make schedules at United. It's so stupid. Oh, my God. A microscopic, a microscope is needed to view the bag's design with the tiny object measuring 657 by 222 by 700 micrometers, narrow enough to pass through the eye of a needle. The purse is so small you'll need a microscope to see it. The art collector, collective behind the bag set. Uh, the art collective is known for its controversial designs. They include shoes with human blood. Oh, it's these people. Remember the shoes that, oh, yeah. God, the blood Trainers blood. with holy water yeah. in the soles. A cologne that smells like WD-40. And this time, the collective decided to take the trend of small handbags to the extreme. There are big handbags, normal handbags, and small handbags. But this is the final word in bag, miniaturization. The bag features handbag designer Louis Vuitton branding but has no connection to the brand. See, they steal shit like I this, too. Exactly. Yeah, I know. And then they get in trouble, and then it's too late, though. They've already done it. Um, while it was be creating some of the, being created, some of the tiny bag samples sent to be reviewed by the brand were so small they were lost by the MSCHF <laughs> team. <laughs> but the know. loss of the time should be less of the worry of... Uh, um, yeah, wait till you see it. It's neon green. Bids started at fifteen grand. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yep. This is what people are doing. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's stupid. We're going to leave you off with a uh, feel-good story. I must say. Well, <laughs> this one. If you guys have seen my special on Amazon, please go on Amazon. Watch my special. Rate it. Highly. Thank you. Yeah, um <laughs> I do what they I do on the podcast. Yeah. yeah. I do a thing um about um 
Well, by the way, I forgot the what are we watching segment. Well, and we I was. About the Chicago serial killer. Oh, the Chicago serial killer. I'm going to save that for next week. Yes, I am. No. Yes, I am. No. Yes, no. I am. Or you're not going to Taylor. Well, because there's more information coming out. So in my Amazon special, which, by the way, um, well, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, I do a joke about furries and how I learned about furries. And I, so if you go watch that joke on Amazon, it, it never even occurred to me to ask, are the furries gay or straight? Or are both? Or... Right. right. We've already... Binary. Non-binary. non-binary. Yeah. Well, gay furries are on a hacking spree <laughs> against anti-trans... <laughs> against, I know. I mean, first of all, if I'm a beagle and I meet a lizard, a gecko at the party, <laughs> and I'm getting along with the gecko, it's hard enough to understand in my head that I'm talking to a lizard. And then I got to figure out what, oh anyway, gay furries. Um, I kind of love it, though, because this is the children, and they'll get you. Gee they furries. will get you. They are on a hacking spree against the anti-trans movement. It expanded to five states. South Dakota, Nebraska, Texas, South Carolina, and Pennsylvania have been targeted. So they may look like a silly beagle, but they get home. Um, their group is known as Siege Sect. I don't know if I'm saying that right. They've expanded to five states. The group, which earlier this month leaked data from Texas, city of Fort Fort Worth, they claimed on Wednesday that it had breached government websites belonging to the states I just said. In an announcement on the breaches, which encourages readers to be gay, do crime. Wow. Um, the, yeah, we have proudly defaced the South Dakota Boards and Commissioners website. We left little spe- special messages across their sites. Unfortunately, they have now fixed the defacement. Since it seems South Dakota didn't appreciate our gift, we will offer our gifts to someone else. We've hacked and leaked documents from the Nebraska Supreme Court intranet and intranet. It actually says it and South Carolina Criminal Justice Information Services. Wow. The children wow, be be fear the children. <laughs> fear the children. Wow. The hacking group also went state to state, and it retri- retrieved health-related information of Texas and caused disruptions to systems in Pennsylvania. It claimed that it came across over 15,000 child care records, although it has no intention of publishing those. We've planned our new attacks carefully, and we've ensured to give Texas another gift very soon. Oh! Wow. So, just know, if you're putting anti-trans stuff up, the children are coming. I still don't understand why the furries are involved. <laughs> I don't either. Maybe, maybe termite will tell us. Why does, yeah, are there, is, is, do we have any gay furry termites? I mean, <laughs> what does furry have to do with trans? Now I sound like Larry King. I thought you were a rabbit. <laughs> what are you talking about? We'll be right back after a commercial with our trans rabbit. <laughs> what? Trans rabbit. <laughs> I don't know why furries, I don't know why. So, a furry group? what? Are they a furry group? Yeah, they're gay furries. Specifically. Specifically. Yeah, we must have at least one out there, right? Yeah. We're very open-minded. We love beer is for everyone. <laughs> beer. So, what did we decide? To cancel your thoughts. Um, va- a vacation from thinking. Exactly how I think. Yeah. Um, Okay, so I am off to um, the Hampton Beach Casino Ballroom. Very excited. Then the Cape Cod Melody Tent. Waited my whole life to go. Can't wait. I can't wait to see what's so fantastic. Right. Maybe it's just a lobster roll. Yeah. Maybe I might that. Go, I might go to that one. Then, Boise. I always have fun in Boise. Reno. Yeah. <laughs> I say on stage in Reno. Well, I'm not going to say on, on the podcast. You have to come to the show. Hershey, Pennsylvania, uh-huh. home of the most philanthropic person that I've ever known. Well, I didn't know him, but I've read about her experience, Mr. Hershey. Yep. Um, Pittsburgh. Yep. So great. So yeah. Tremonti Brothers sandwich. I know it's hack, but I'm going. And Cleveland. Huh. 
one of my favorite bars in the whole whole wide world lives in Cleveland. Yeah. The no, the Harbor Inn. Harbor Inn. Yeah. The Anchor, the Anchor Inn is in Buffalo. Anchor bar the Anchor Bar is in Buffalo. In Buffalo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also a wonderful place. So termites. You can come see me in any of those places. And then we're starting to get the gigs for 2024 yeah. are rolling in. And um, there's some good ones. Yeah, some big ones. Yeah, big ones. Yeah. yeah. So. You got some merch coming in? Uh, there's going to be a new hat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a t-shirt. Yeah. yeah the children mm-hmm. uh, in Nashville are working on that mm-hmm. now. So there you go, termites. Yeah. All right. Well, it's still summer, thank God. Not too, too hot yet. I don't know when the 100 days are coming, and I hope they don't. But although it was the hottest day, the earth was the hottest it's ever been on record the other day. For July. Fourth of July July was the hottest. Yeah. Which is kind of weird to think, like, we're just, yeah, getting hotter and hotter. Nobody's really saying well, I mean, there's people, the children, that are destroying paintings to try to say something. And, you know, I agree with your premise, but let's not ruin art. Okay? 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 Yes. All right, termites, that's it. Wear your sunblock. Yes. Be sunblock termites. Yes. And-